Hello everyone, welcome back once again. In this video, we will look at implementing the blockchain inside the C-Sharp project using the Visual Studio 2022. But before we get started, please make sure you subscribe to the channel if you haven't. So blockchain is a system for recording information in a way that makes it difficult or impossible to change, hack or cheat the system. And of course, Visual Studio is an integrated development environment for building websites, web apps, mobile apps, softwares, etc. So as you can see on the screen, I've actually got our Visual Studio opened. Yeah. So we go ahead by creating a new project. Yeah. So in this case, we're going to use a C Sharp console app. Yeah. So we're going to create a new project. And we select the language to be C Sharp, of course. So we select a C Sharp console console app yeah and here we're not going to do anything to the configuration we're just going to click on the nest and then nest again so here obviously we're using the .NET 6.0 yeah so we, we click on the create yeah so it might take a while i mean as you can see we've got the new project created for us now so we're not going to waste too much time so we go ahead and click on the project right click on the project and add a new item basically we're going to add a new class yeah and we're going to call this class block block.cs yeah so this will be a public class yeah so before we get into the class yeah we're going to create a new we're going to create another interface yeah this will be a public interface And we're going to call this I block. So inside our interface, this is what we're going to put inside. So we're going to put a byte array. And we're going to call it data. And it's a get, yeah? And we put another byte array. And we're going to put we're gonna call it hash, yeah, and this one will be a get setter, yeah. And we're going to put an integer property called a nonce. So basically, I'm just I will explain the the nonce later on. So we're just gonna put our get setter here, and we're going to put another byte array. So this one will be our previous hash, yeah. So we're going to put our previous hash. And this will also be a get setter. And there we have a day time. So this will be our timestamp. Yeah. And it's also a get setter. So as you can see, this is what we've got for the I block here. Yeah? So we come back to the block class here yeah? and we implement the I block. Yeah. So now we're actually going to implement all the members. So what we do is we just I'm just gonna type them here. Yeah? So the first one is um is a byte array. And that is our data, and it's a get. And then we have, and of, so this is a public as well. So, so basically, this, these are all public classes. So let's bear that in mind, public. Just gonna copy it, paste it here. So they are all public classes. So here we're just gonna make this bit public as well. 
yeah so the next part is of course we're gonna put our, our public byte array and that is our hash and that is a get setter and we put our public integer as a nonce that is a get set as well then we put another public byte array so this will be our previous hash and that is a get set then we have uh, the time stamp so it's also a public daytime this will be a, a time stamp and it's a get setter so as you can see this is what we've actually got we've got all the what we have inside the i block here yeah so this is what we're going to do next so inside the block we're going to create a, we're gonna create the constructor so we put this parameter byte array so this will be a byte array and uh, we're gonna call this data yeah so here inside here we're gonna set our data data to be equal to um, the incoming data otherwise we throw in a, a new argument yeah so this is what we do then the next part we will set our nonce we set it to zero then um, the previous hash Uh, set it to a new byte array we're just gonna put this then the timestamp We set the timestamp to daytime dot now. Yeah, so this is what we have here inside the block. So the last bit is we ov we override it to string method inside the uh, the block. So this is what we're gonna do. So it's a public override string okay so here instead of we instead of returning the base to string this is what we're going to do we're going to return this this here so basically what we're going to return i'm just going to copy and paste this so but i will let you know you can pause it and redo it just to save time you know so basically this is what we're going to put inside So if we look at it here, so we actually converting some of the incoming data here. So look at it properly. So you can pause it and do it. So basically this is the part one of the video. So I'm just going to do part two straight away. So basically we've actually done the block and the I block. So the next part is we're just going to get into the main stuff. Yeah. So once again if you haven't subscribed to the channel please make sure you do because you know i've got lots of videos coming up here yeah? so have a lovely morning afternoon evening wherever you are peace